Welcome to episode 5 of my podcast, where today of course we're reviewing the 2018 Singapore Grand Prix. And welcome guys to the Singapore Grand Prix podcast with Nib, and we are going to review this, I'll be honest, quite boring Grand Prix, but we're going to review it anyway. Nib, what did you think first off before we go into the teams of the race? Yeah, it was absolutely horrific this race it was so so boring and if it went for Sergei Sorotkin it would have been a snooze fest absolutely but by Singapore standards this probably was a classic knowing just the way Singapore is but we'll go on to the teams and first start off with Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton really what a weekend for Mercedes and Hamilton I think from Hamilton's point of view the pole app he did quite possibly is his best that he's ever done and in terms of his entire race weekend I think it's the best weekend that he's done just the pace that he showed in a car that I don't think was the best I still don't think it was the best car I just think that Lewis was so quick this weekend and motivated to win the race and get on pole that you know he did get on pole and win the race Nib what did you think of Mercedes and Hamilton's surprisingly dominant performance well this weekend it was all down to how good lewis hamilton was and he thoroughly thoroughly deserved everything that he got this right this weekend 25 points the pole position certainly the best pole position i've seen in many many years quite comfortably and then in the race he was untouchable the as soon as max caught up to the back of him um, when he was getting held up by the blue flags and everything. Um, that was so funny, that was. Um, he was still able to pull away just like that. And next thing you knew, he still had a four to five second gap. So he had the race under control the whole time. And he was even complaining about his tyres being a bit cold because of the lack of wear on them. So a, a perfect weekend for Lewis Hamilton, that's for sure. Now, Mercedes were good, but Valtteri Bottas... I've seen some people saying that Bottas was actually quite poor. I think Bottas had an underrated weekend. You have to remember, again, the Mercedes car is not the most comfortable to drive at this track. It really is not. And to beat Kimi Raikkonen and Daniel Ricciardo, two drivers that have better records at this track than Bottas does, I thought that was actually quite good, despite... Bottas struggling with his tyres. Nib, do you agree or do you think Bottas could have done a lot better, you know, saying qualifying or the race? Well, in the second half of the race, he definitely could have done a bit better because he couldn't get close enough to uh, Nico Hülkenberg to trigger the blue flag, which was quite funny. But, yeah, he had, an, he had a good qualifying performance. I don't think we would have expected anything more of him. Most people would have said he's probably going to be P6 behind Ricardo and Raikkonen. So, yeah, it was, now looking back at it, it was a good qualifying performance by Valtteri Bottas. Next up is Ferrari, who, again, I have to say, with both driver and team, when it comes to strategy and mistakes, they bottled the weekend again. I have to say it, Vettel in qualifying made two mistakes at the Anderson Bridge locking up. That did cost him lap time for sure. Could he have got pole? Who knows, but he definitely could have at least got P2 had it not been for mistakes and just inconsistency with his laps in qualifying. And for the race, Ferrari just got the strategy wrong, clearly. And it's not like we haven't seen this before. For example, of course, China, uh, Baku, Spain. We've seen this before from Ferrari and Nib. Surely now, Ferrari and Vettel have quite a slim chance of the championship because they made even more mistakes. Yeah, well, after the summer break, I predicted that Ferrari and Vettel would win both titles, but now I've got to change that, and I firmly believe that Lewis Hamilton will win the 2018 driver's title now. He's just too far behind with two little races left. They have to win every single race, and I don't really see Hamilton not winning a race. He's in a really good patch of form at the moment. But yeah, as you've mentioned, Ferrari bottled 
It was strategy again. They bottled qualifying. They definitely bottled qualifying. That That's something that they haven't got enough criticism for. Vettel making mistakes in Q3, which he usually does not do. So who knows? It, Vettel's definitely not at the top of his form at the moment. And Hamilton is, and there's no way that you can beat Lewis Hamilton when he's at the top of his game, which he is at the moment. But with Ferrari and their strategy in the race, they've, they've made that same mistake a few times this season, especially Bahrain. Remember, they went on the soft tyre and everyone went on the medium tyre. And because of a great drive by Sir Sebastian Vettel at the time, they were... They won the race because of his great drive, not because of the correct strategy. And for Kimi Raikkonen, well, there's no real point discussing him because he was nowhere this weekend and there was nothing he did that is really worth talking about. He just did not have the pace. So let's move on to Red Bull, who I thought coming into the weekend, I did not think they would be as fast as they would, especially with Max Verstappen. I thought the best they could get in the race was third and Max ended up getting second and deservedly the Red Bull was very quick but without reliability issues for Max Verstappen it could have been maybe not a better position you know winning the race but he definitely could have been closer in qualifying and maybe closer in the race without those issues. Nib what do you think about not only Verstappen's race but also Daniel Ricciardo who from Q3 onwards, just did not have the pace of his teammate. Yeah, a very disappointing weekend for Daniel Ricciardo. This is usually a track where he's absolutely flying at, but that was not the case this weekend. A very poor, poor qualifying. I don't know whether or not he's ha he had the same issues as Verstappen, but I don't know what was wrong with him this weekend and then at the during the race you can't overtake when you're trying to overtake a top team so there was no chance even though he was about three seconds a lap quicker than Bottas towards the end and Raikkonen there was no way he was ever getting past them and yeah brilliant weekend for Max Verstappen didn't really put a foot wrong all race weekend and he thoroughly deserved his P2 with a great overcut on Sebastian Vettel. And that is one thing that I have noticed is more and more we're starting to see the overcut become a bit more popular and a bit better than the undercut even. Drivers staying out on their older tyres are able to push a bit harder on them. And those who have had to pit have to look after their tyres at the start of the stint. Otherwise, they blister like they did with Kimi Raikkonen's in Monza. Obviously, there was no blistering at Singapore, but they can still get a lot of a lot of wear. But yeah, Max, brilliant and probably the best he could have done this weekend. Right now, let's go on to the midfield teams. First, starting off with McLaren, who had a very good race with Fernando Alonso scoring points in P7 and Van Dorn not being too far off in P12. So good there from McLaren. I thought after their qualifying with Alonso, they, di they did have a chance, sorry, of points, but I didn't see P7 coming out from Fernando Alonso. I just did not see that. I thought maybe at best he could get a P9, but 7th, a very good result. And Van Dorn, of course, as I just said, doing well as well. Nib, McLaren, do you think they were surprisingly good or did you see this coming? Yeah, surprisingly good weekend for McLaren. I didn't expect them to be that far in the points, but obviously with Mr. Sorokin, the whole midfield got stuck behind him and it gave Alonso a very comfortable P7. He, he just drove around the track and he would have got P7, so he didn't have to do too much. And a pretty good weekend for Stoffel van Dorn. Made up a few positions in the race, so credit to him. But yeah, a solid weekend for McLaren, which is a pretty rare thing to say. Next up is Renault, who also had a good race with Carlos Sainz in P8 and Nico Hülkenberg in P10. And even though at times they didn't have the greatest pace, all that matters for them, of course, is finishing ahead of Haas and getting that fourth place and consolidating that fourth place. And Nib, 
pretty much that's all that Renault had to do and that's what they did in Singapore. Yeah, a very good weekend for Renault. They got the job done. They gained more points in the championship on Haas, like they did at Monza after Roman Grosjean's disqualification over the illegal floor. Thankfully, Haas did have that updated floor, so they didn't get disqualified. But yeah, Renault, once again, like like McLaren, got the job, got the job done. And now next up is Force India. What a controversial weekend for this team in the race at the start. Sergio Perez took Esteban Ocon out of the race and Nib. Before we get on to Perez and Sorokin and that incident, what did you think of the Perez and Ocon crash? Was Perez at fault or do you think, like me, that it was a racing incident? I personally think Perez didn't quite see him or see him at all and Ocon was kind of going for an impossible move around the outside. I'm still quite unsure on this incident, actually. It's borderline Perez's fault for me after seeing the footage, the onboard footage from Perez. Ocon was right next to him, which in an F1 car is a blind spot, so that's fair enough. But he opened up the steering angle and steered straight into Ocon, and by that time, Grosjean was not down his inside. But I do also agree with you that it was quite an opportunistic um, overtake opportunity by Ocon, and he definitely put his car in a bad position if Perez didn't see him. But you should be putting your trust in your teammate that he is going to see you, and he didn't. And Ocon paid the price, and now there'll be no more racing between the Racing Point Force India boys again this season. But with the Perez and Sorokin incident, I think I have to say Perez was so poor in what he did. Now, I have seen some people saying that Perez um, used his car as a weapon, like Sebastian Vettel did to Lewis Hamilton in Baku in 2017. I disagree. I don't think that was what he was trying to do. I think it was just poor defensive driving and he kind of miscalculated where Sorokin's car was in respect to where Perez's car was, and he was just very dumb in the way he defended his position and was way too aggressive against Sorokin, who was literally not doing anything to deserve that kind of treatment. So, Nib, do you, what do you think about this incident? Do you think Sergio Perez was clearly at fault? I, I'm guessing you do, but how poor was this piece of driving? This was back to the 2013 Sergio Perez that we especially seen at Monaco. I don't know what he was quite thinking with Sorokin. Sorokin was right next to him once again. I don't know whether or not there was a problem with his mirror or something, but honestly, such, such poor driving. And he deservedly got the drive-through penalty as his race was going to already be over. Just a moment of madness from Perez, and we haven't seen that for a while, so it was a bit of a shock. Next up is Williams, and Sergei Sorokin is really the only thing to mention about Williams because of his very robust defensive driving, and it was clearly the most exciting thing in the Singapore Grand Prix race. It was it was brilliant to see his Defending against Brendan Hartley was definitely illegal and was quite ridiculous, but it's great to see from Sorokin that even though he's in a car that is so slow compared to the Force India, the Haas, you know, the cars he was racing, it's great to see that he is giving it everything to stay ahead, even though I think he knows, Nib, that he wasn't going to stay ahead for the entire race. I think he knew that he would eventually get overtaken, but he was still going to fight for that position anyway. Yeah, it was some great defending by Sergei Sorokin, and it was good to see a driver actually defend, because we don't actually see any of that really nowadays in Formula 1. That that battle that he had Perez before Perez just decided to go left into him was absolutely brilliant. It looked like they were bloody on the F1 game. So... That was a great little battle. And then <laughs> the quite hilarious uh, defense of Brendan Hartley, where he just went absolutely straight on. Reminded me a bit of 
Rosberg in 2016 against Hamilton and against Verstappen. So <laughs> it was quite funny. Paul Brennan Hartley had to just completely break and nearly make his car stop to make sure he didn't hit the wall. So it was a good performance by Sorotkin, a good defensive performance. He put up a good fight. And it was quite hilarious to see Sergio Perez overtake him about four or five times. Next up is Toro Rosso, who was so, so poor. And there's nothing really to discuss about Toro Rosso, Nib, because, again, no pace. Yeah, there's, there is nothing to discuss with Toro Rosso. The pace was very disappointing. I think this is a weekend where everyone, including the team, expected them to be in the points and they were nowhere near the points this weekend so quite disappointing for Toro Rosso and I struggle to see the next time that they will score any points quite frankly. Now we go on to Haas who's paced during the weekend I would say up to you know the race qualifying was good from Roman Grosjean Kevin Magnussen not so good but in the race especially in the first stint with Roman Grosjean on the hypersoft tyre the pace was, was nowhere. They were struggling with tyres that forced him to pit earlier, thus meaning he was now stuck behind Sergio Sorokin. And then we have all of that controversy where Grosjean went off the track to pass Sorokin. He absolutely did. I, I don't care what anyone says. It's clear to see that. And got a penalty for ignoring blue flags now. With blue flags, if I was in charge of F1, I would not, or the FIA, I would not have blue flags in F1. But... Those are the rules, and you have to abide by them, and he clearly did not. So, Roman Grosjean, Nib, wow, very, very messy race. Yeah, it was a quite an interesting race, mainly. Thank you, Sir Guy Sorokin, once again. But very poor race by Haas. They were absolutely nowhere in the race, no pace whatsoever. In qualifying, it looked promising with Grosjean. Um, especially in Q1, they were looking very good. But then it just all fell apart as the race weekend progressed and deserved penalty behind the blue flags by holding up Vettel and Hamilton and Verstappen by about five seconds that lap. Oh, not Vettel, but Verstappen and Hamilton. Five seconds that lap, which was quite ridiculous. Hamilton was just... Looked like he was on the cooldown lap behind them, trying to make sure that he didn't crash into them. So that was quite hilarious. That was certainly the most uh, funny part of the race. But a very disappointing race weekend for Haas. There's really not too much to say about it. They've lost more points to Renault in the championship. And now it's almost looking like it'll be an uphill battle to beat Renault and the Constructors. And finally is Sauber, and it was surprisingly a good race. Charles Leclerc finishing in P9 and Marcus Ericsson in P11. Leclerc, very, very good to get ninth place. You know, great overtake on Pierre Gasly to get past him, despite Gasly, of course, making a mistake. But Leclerc had very good pace in the race, which I did not see coming because he wasn't really that quick during the weekend. And, you know, of course, made a mistake in practice, one which was... Not too great to start off the weekend, but yeah, I didn't see this pace, not just from Leclerc, but from Ericsson. I didn't see this pace coming from Sauber and Nib. For Sauber, I think this has to be one of their best race performances, considering Singapore really should not suit their car. Yeah, surprisingly good race weekend by Selb. I think most of us expect them to be comfortably outside the points this weekend. But Charles Leclerc got two points. And Marcus Ericsson, quite unlucky not to get a point, as he discussed after the race. I'm not sure if he's seen that. Be He said that, one that one, when they pitted for the Hypersoft, they got caught up in the blue flags with... Ricardo and Raikkonen and that just stopped his chances of getting P10. So a very good weekend for Sauber and not a bad race weekend for Charles, Charles Leclerc's first race weekend around Singapore. Right, so guys, now we are going to go into the podcast questions. And the first one is from JB and he asks, 
what has been your favourite F1 race that you have seen? Nib, take it away. I'm pretty sure you're going to go for a race where an Australian driver has uh, won. Oh, I most certainly am. And that is going to be the 2009 German Grand Prix. Just purely because that was the first time that I've seen an Australian win, take pole, get a drive-through penalty, and still catch Barrichello in the first stint. It was absolutely the best drive that Mark Webber had ever done in his career. And he ended up winning the race by a long, long margin over Sebastian Vettel. So... That has to be my favourite race. Probably not the best, but certainly my favourite because after the race with Weber's radio, oh, that got me uh, very emotional at the time. Now, my favourite race after considering a lot of races has to be Suzuka 2005. I'm sure I've said this before. The reason is, is because that race had so much action, so many overtakes. I could watch that race over and over again and never get bored. And whenever I watch that move that Fernando Alonso did on Michael Schumacher at 130R, and especially that overtake from Kimi Raikkonen on Fissi Keller on the last lap, I still get goosebumps. Anytime I watch that clip, I get goosebumps. And I wasn't even watching the race live at the time. I didn't see the race probably until 2014 or 2015. But it still gives me goosebumps because that moment was, I think it has to be one of, maybe one of the most underrated great moments in F1 history. Because maybe it didn't have a championship um, resting on it. But what a moment. It will go down as one of the best for me in F1 history. Now the next question is from Tibor who asks, will Sebastian Vettel retire if he does not win the 2019 World Championship? I don't think he will retire. I think he'll continue racing until at least, I don't know, 2023, 2024. Nib, I'm sure you think that he'll continue for a lot longer yet. Yeah, Vettel simply loves racing too much and racing is, is his life. So I don't see him retiring anytime soon. And he also asks, is there any possible chance for Vettel to win the 2018 World Championship? In my race review yesterday, I said that Vettel has at least a 25% chance and I'm going to stick to that. Because again, if Hamilton retires in Russia, for example, and Vettel wins, then it's down to 15 points and it's back on again. So it's not over, but Nib, I, it's definitely out of his hands. It's all down to Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes from now on in. Ferrari have to win every race, but that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, that's going to win them the title. I'd give Vettel even slimmer chances than that. I'd give Vettel a 10% chance of winning this title. I think after Singapore, the title is almost wrapped up for Hamilton, but there's still... Uh, more than a handful of races left, so who knows? You know, Mercedes could be struck by chronic reliability issues and Vettel could win the championship, but I don't really see that happening, so I will think that Hamilton will win the title. The next one is from Bois, who asks, does Perez deserve the criticism? I assume he's asking about what he did in Singapore. He deserves criticism for sure, but I think some of it is too harsh. I've seen some people saying that he should get a two-race ban or a one-race ban. You know, trust me, it was bad what he did to Sorokin, but it was not that bad. He didn't, you know, do what Grosjean did at Spa in 2012. I, I've seen a lot worse than what Sergio Perez did. I've seen a lot worse, trust me. And Nib, I think, you know, again, he does deserve the criticism, but... He shouldn't be getting a race ban. He was just, you know, he's very stupid. He got his punishment. Let's just move on. Yeah, I agree. I think as a community on Twitter and everything, we do get stuck a bit too much on criticising the drivers. It's over and done with now. His penalty has been given out to him. He deserves the criticism, but let's just move on with our lives. And the final one is from Ethan, who asks, could Charles Leclerc win a world driver's title with Ferrari? before 2021 now he can he absolutely can if the ferrari car is still competitive enough in 2019 and 2020 to win a title he absolutely can 
But will he win a title? I'm not sure. We'll just have to see how he performs under massive pressure at Ferrari alongside Sebastian Vettel. Nib, I know you're quite a fan of Leclerc. Um, are you confident for him in 2019 and 2020? Do you think he'll be a, a world champion by the time we get to 2021? I don't see any reason why he can't be a, a world champion before 2021. If Ferrari have the car, I absolutely think he'll become world champion. I, I rate Leclerc that highly and we will see how good he is next season. There is no doubt about that. I think he is one of the best drivers on the grid and everyone will be shocked next season when he dominates. Now, he probably won't dominate, but I still think he'll have a very, very good season. Right, so that's it for this Singapore Grand Prix podcast. Next up is Russia. I cannot wait to get that race over and done with. I hate that track. I cannot wait for us to get to Suzuka, and hopefully, Nib, Suzuka comes a lot quicker than it is seemingly going to. It's now, what, two and a half weeks away. Yeah, well, I'm very much looking forward to Suzuka. 2 2 p.m. in the afternoon here, perfect. But yeah, not looking forward to the Russian Grand Prix, that's for sure. But anyway, guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget, guys, on Thursday, I will be back with a classic F1 Seasons video. As well, don't forget to join my Discord server. There's a link below down in the description. Also with my Twitter and my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below what did you think of what we said in today's podcast. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time it's been me Chazzer HD, goodbye.